when we as men are being constantly bombarded with messages of how we are inherently problematic, being told our whole existence is nothing short of a plague, that society is better off without men, that all things to do with masculinity are by nature barbaric, you create a whole generation of men that are brainwashed into believing that narrative and actively working towards distancing themselves from anything remotely to do with traditional masculinity. There's systematic sexism against men. Yeah, you don't hear a peep about it because to shit on men is considered trendy and progressive. Men are being cast as villains. There's a full-scale machination to feminize today's men. All the way from kindergarten to universities, men are being coerced into turning on their inherent masculine nature and conform to the societal pressure of today's world. The tragic part about this whole thing is that men are actually complying without any resistance because not doing so instantly classifies you as toxically masculine. All of this is making men deeply dissatisfied and unhappy with themselves. We have two choices and both of them are equally bad. The first choice is where you disregard all the societal pressure to suppress all of your masculine traits and face the ostracization. And the second choice is to give in to the pressure of feminizing yourself and lose all self-respect along the way. So as social animals, most men bow down to the pressure of beating their true nature and suppressing their masculine traits to be socially accepted, which results in men turning to violent video games to subconsciously vent their frustration with the bitch they've turned into. The violent video games are an escape from the brutalities of living a mundane and a meaningless life that stems from being docile and not living your true self. This is also one of the root causes of why a certain portion of men become full-on misogynist and act reprehensibly online behind the veil of anonymity. This behavior doesn't come out of nowhere. It stems from a deep dissatisfaction with who they've turned into and it's a way for them to strike back at the feminine culture. It's a coping mechanism of sorts. Don't misconstrue what I'm saying as me justifying their behavior or condoning it. I'm not. I want to be clear about that. Now, unfortunately, there's one guy who's risen to prominence by accurately diagnosing the problem with the all-out attack on masculinity. I'm of course talking about Andrew Tate. Credit where it's due, he is undeniably an effective and a talented communicator as indicative of his cultish following among young men. He speaks to distraught men in such a way as to proselytize them to shift back to being unabashedly masculine. And he's not faking it. He truly understands where they're coming from. He understands their predisposition in the way that he speaks. He's incredibly nuanced and precise in his speech in diagnosing the issue. I wasn't following him until very recently. I mean, I'd heard of him but never really consumed any of his content outside of seeing some of out of context clips of his from people that claimed he was a misogynist, a materialist, a pimp, a far right villain among other things. But given the abysmal reputation of the mainstream media, I was immediately dismissive of all their accusations against him because given their history, who wouldn't? Turns out there was some degree of truth to their claiming for once. But when you've cried wolf so many times, it's hard to take you seriously. Anyways, so the first time he piqued my interest was when Tucker Carlson had him on. Now, Tucker Carlson is someone I have quite a bit of respect for because he's a person of integrity by all accounts. I listened to the whole two and a half hour long interview on X, formerly known as Twitter, and I came out of it gaining a huge amount of respect for Andrew Tate. Mind you, this is all before I knew his background. He didn't say one thing in that whole interview that I disagreed with. He was straight to the point in diagnosing the problem with today's society and giving his thoughts on what needs to be done to get us back on the right path. Things like working hard as a man and not feeling a sense of entitlement to being respected regardless of your achievements. He was all about putting in the work, paying your dues as a man, and making something of yourself by virtue of you being disciplined. I don't know anyone who would disagree with any of that, except for those woke elites who find waking up early in the morning a sign of white supremacy. But other than those retards, everyone else found the conversation rational. I say that because it resonated with the vast majority of people that watched it, given the overwhelmingly positive response to the whole conversation. The full interview has over 100 million views just on X, and this isn't counting all the clips that were taken from the whole interview. Like I mentioned earlier, I'd only read articles and these out of context clips from mainstream media. I went into the interview with a favorable opinion of him, primarily because the mainstream media was vehemently opposed to everything that he stood for. I wanted to believe they were misrepresenting him and to some extent they were, although not entirely. Let me sidetrack a little to clarify my stance on why I 
default to mistrusting and dismissing anything that the mainstream media propagates. They describe Jordan Peterson in a similar way. Now, in the case of Jordan Peterson, I've listened to close to 400 hours of him speaking. I watched all his publicly available lectures on YouTube three times over, all his podcasts, his debates and interviews. So I really do know who he is as a person. And when the media was disparaging him left and right, I lost all faith in them. Every time Dr. Peterson was in the news, they cast him off as some sort of a person who hated women, who was anti-science, some Bible-thumping white person from Canada. There were times when he was portrayed as some sort of a Nazi who wanted to commit mass genocide on all LGBTQ people, when nothing could be any further from the truth. So you can see why I default to not trusting the media. I digress. Now with Andrew Tate, they were accusing him of far worse things than he had actually done, when the things that he had actually done were bad enough already, they didn't need to lie. There's videos of him teaching men to coerce women into selling their bodies by doing webcam stuff. There's videos of him beating a woman up with a belt. He used to teach men how to be straight up pimps in no uncertain terms and how to manipulate women into stripping on camera. There's videos of him saying that women are only meant to do adult cam stuff and they're no better at doing anything else. Now that he's blown up and under a lot of scrutiny, he engages in moral relativism to justify his past actions. In a recent interview with Candace Owens, this is after his interview with Dr. Carlson. He didn't have one iota of remorse in him. On the contrary, he doubled down saying that all his past actions were justified because he was in a position where he didn't have a lot of money and he needed to do all those things to get wealthy. Now the thing that I was most disappointed with was with Candace Owens not really pushing back on him trying to justify his past behavior. Suffice it to say, he's not a person young impressionable kids should look up to. That's not to say a lot of what he says is null and void by virtue of his misdeeds in the past. We have to be careful about throwing the baby out with the bathwater. And at the same time, we can't hold him up as a hero for young kids to find a role model in. Personally, I find him to be deeply morally repugnant. I think he's an opportunist who is exploiting the void left from a lack of a cultural masculine figure. And he's risen to stardom, particularly among young men, as a consequence of the hard pivot to being ultra sensitive and walking on eggshells for all these years. The pendulum was bound to sway the other way. It was only a matter of when. I mean, in some ways, Andrew Tate is the perfect person for today's digital economy. He talks in sound bites, which are perfect for platforms like TikTok and X. So no wonder he's astronomically popular among today's generation. There was a recent survey conducted to see the rise in conservatism among young Gen Z boys. And to no one's surprise, there's a shift towards conservatism among young Gen Z boys. To all the kids taken in by Tate's message, I invite you to listen to people like Jordan Peterson or Joe Rogan or Jocko Willing. These people are truly ethical human beings and they actually walk the walk. You won't find them talking in sound bites or being unapologetically materialistic by showing off their cars and possessions. But what they say is just as impactful, if not more. Their words are deeply meaningful and helpful for anyone trying to get their life in order or for anyone seeking to be a better human being. Thank you for watching this video. I hope this serves as a means for you to have a conversation of your own. God bless.